Welcome back everybody, Addison with S4 Suspension here, and today we're talking about volume spacers, specifically those that fit inside your shocks. Volume spacers are small objects, typically made of some form of plastic. They go inside of your shock's air chamber, this is going to adjust the overall volume of air that your shock can utilize. Why would you want to adjust the overall volume of air in your shock? Well, this gives you control over the rate of pressure rise or ramp up within your suspension. Adjusting this rate of ramp up through volume spacers can help you do a few things. It can help you prevent bottoming out, it can give you a little bit more mid-stroke support, and it can even make a little bit lighter off the top feel for your shock, all while remaining at the same sag. Today, I'm going to show you how to adjust the volume spacers on two different types of shocks. First is going to be on a Fox Float X2, and that's going to have a slide-on air sleeve and clip-in bands, similar to like a DVO Topaz. Next is going to be on the Fox Float X. That has a thread-on air can with volume spacers that are different sizes that clip directly into the upper eyelet. That's going to be similar to like a RockShox Super Deluxe. We're going to start with our X2, so we'll get rid of some of these tools we don't need for this process. What we're gonna need for the X2s, so we're gonna need a shock pump, as always when we're working on suspension. We'll need a valve core remover, our shock obviously, a small pick to remove our C-clip, I'll show you where that is in just a little bit, and our volume spacers of course. Let's get started. To adjust the volume spacers in a shock like this X2 here, they're gonna lie inside of this air sleeve. First things first, always start with a clean shock. You don't want dirt to potentially get inside of your suspension. It's gonna cause problems and a headache down the road. Next, note your air pressure for reference after you put your shock back together. Then slowly remove your valve core. Do this extra slowly, that way the shock doesn't try to suck in on itself. Once your valve core is removed, note the orientation of your air valve in relation to your upper eyelet and your external reservoir. This is gonna be crucial to make sure that it fits back on your bike the way it's supposed to. After you've noted the orientation, slide this air sleeve towards your upper stationary eyelet. What that will do is that's going to actually expose this C-clip here. Once we've exposed the C-clip, we'll position it to where the little opening is here, and that will allow us to pull it out. Then, we need to slide the other side to where it's free of the cleat holders, just like that, and it should slide out no problem at all. Now that our C-clip is off, we can simply pull the air sleeve all the way down to the bottom, and that's going to expose the positions where the bands go. A quick note here, be careful of your mounting hardware when going to remove your air can or your air sleeve. You don't want to smash into it or slide across it, potentially damaging it. Also, shocks have a maximum number or size volume spacer they can accept. You'll want to go onto your manufacturer's website, type in your serial number, and it'll give you all those nitty gritty details on what your shock can actually accept. Today, I know this shot can hold three, so I'm gonna be perfectly fine putting these two on. This is a great opportunity to clean out under the air sleeve as well, followed by applying a layer of light grease around the O-rings that the air sleeve slides on. For the X2, it's going to clip around just like so, and they will clip into each other, just like that. Nice little snap into place. We'll lock the other one. While you're in here, it's never a bad idea to take the opportunity to just wipe out the inside of your air can. Make sure everything's nice and clean before you put it back together. Now your volume spaces are in and you need to slide your air sleeve back on. I like to get it halfway on and then find your orientation to make sure everything is set properly. On the X2, there are actually little feet again, same that hold the C-clip in, that you need to line up before you can slide your air sleeve back on. Once you line everything up, it should just pop right back into place. Now that we have our air sleeve back on and in place, you're gonna put in the retention system, which is simply this C-clip, same as earlier. To reinstall the C-clip on the X2, you're gonna note the location of these two feet that hold the C-clip in place. You go to the outer edge of one of those little feet, slide your C-clip into place, and then if you push that C-clip around so it slides in that groove all the way until you get to the point where you're past the second foot, your C-clip should slide right into place. Then the last step 
is just to center your opening in the C-clip between those two feet. That's what's going to create that safety seal once you pressurize the shock. Go ahead and put your valve core back in, snug it down. If you've removed your shock from your bike, go ahead and put your shock back in your bike now. Use your Loctite, your grease, your torque wrench, all the proper steps. We have a video how to do that actually on our tech help section as well. Now you know how to do a shock with a slide on air sleeve and clip in spacers like this Flodex 2. But what if you have something a little bit different? What if you have something similar to a RockShox Super Deluxe or even this Float X that we're gonna work on today? Well, the big difference is this has a screw on air can. So we're gonna need to add a strap wrench like so. We'll wanna add plastic or a wooden dowel or chopsticks in this case. And I'll explain more about that in just a moment. And then of course you'll need your tuning kit. It's gonna have a variety of different colors and size clip in volume spacers today. I'm going to go with this 0.4 cubic inch to put in this shot. Volume spaces are typically measured in cubic inches. So you have 0 0.2, 0 0.4, so on and so forth in cubic inches. Take the opportunity to wipe off your shock. Make sure everything's clean before you open it up. I like to remove the valve core all the way. That's going to ensure that there's no pressure inside this air can when I try to remove it. Now, typically you will put the shock or the eyelet in a vise. That's going to help you hold it still. Unfortunately, I forgot my vice at home today, so I'm just gonna have to try and... Ugh, got it. Fortunately, they shouldn't really be too, uh, too tight in the first place, but that's gonna be where a strap wrench is gonna be for. It's gonna help you rotate this air can. Loosen that. Be careful. Make sure your strap wrench is really tight on there because if it's loose, it can slip and rip these stickers off. And that's not what you wanna do. It's not super pro. Once you get it loose with the rat strap wrench, then you're just going to remove it by hand like this. This can be done on or off the bike. We prefer typically to take it off the bike. Just makes it easier, makes everything cleaner and simpler. But you can do it on the bike if you need to. If you've got it off the bike, you can go ahead and just pull that air can all the way off, set it to the side. Be careful because there's going to be fluid inside of this air sleeve here. That's just a lubricating fluid. Set it on its side, should be perfectly fine. Next, with this one in specific, you'll find out there is a bottom out bumper and then a bottom out plate. Our volume spacers are actually going to go just inside of this upper eyelet here. When you go to install your volume spacers, you will notice that there's lots of indents and cutouts in them. They are proprietary to each different shock and there is an orientation that they go in. Fortunately, most of the time, they will only go in one way. So with this Fox in specific, you can actually just rotate it until you feel it start to click into place and then it just snaps right into place in the upper eyelet. Once that's happened, you can slide your bottom out plate down, slide your bottom out bumper against that and it's time to put your air sleeve back on. Before closing the shock, add one to two cc's of a lubricating fluid, such as Fox 20 weight gold or even RockShox air can lube. When you first reinstall the air sleeve, you're gonna notice there's quite a bit of resistance there. That's because there's too much air in the negative chamber. So far, you haven't been able to equalize the shock by reaching these relief ports at the bottom. What you'll need to do is put the upper eyelet in the palm of your hand. What I like to do is take your middle finger and your ring finger on these lips that are just around the air can and you can kind of pull the air can up while pushing with your opposite hand. Once you get there you need to spin the air can around just to catch that initial thread. Once you get there it's easy you just screw it all the way back in. If you have a vise even better but if you don't this technique usually works pretty well. Screw it all the way back down hand tight. Now you'll reinstall your strap wrench and just give it a little Nipped up. Your air can does not need to be super tight. That is a big problem we see is people over tightening or grilling those air cans on. A big problem there is it can mess up your threads and it can make it really, really difficult for it to come off next time you need to do some sort of service. So just a little bit of a nip up doesn't need to be super tight. Valve core goes back in. Don't forget to put your sag ring back on because that's going to be vital later when you go to reset your sag. And now your shock's all back together and you've successfully adjusted the volume of your air chamber. While there are some key differences between a shock like a Float X or like a Float X2, the core principle is going to remain the same. You're gonna be removing an air sleeve, adding or removing spacers, and then putting the air sleeve back on. So now your shock's back on your bike, time to air it up. But don't forget, 
you need to equalize those positive and negative chambers. You do this by cycling the shock every 20 to 30 PSI. That means going in and out through the stroke. After that, you'll wanna go through the process of setting your sag again. We have a video in our tech help section if you have questions there. Then after that, get out on trail. Make mental notes your first few rides of things you like and sensations maybe you didn't like. Come back, readjust, and continue this process until you're happy and stoked with your ride. Last things last, never forget your air cap. That's crucial, because you wanna keep the dirt out and the happiness in. For now, I'm gonna get back into the shop to continue to make your ride smoother.